What is up, everyone? Welcome to today's news tonight, episode 12. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, I totally screwed up the intro the first time. So here we go again. <laughs> I'm joined tonight by my co-founders, as always, Derek Bittner and Ash Paulson. And of course, we have our special guest, Asa Green River of Borderline Entertainment. How are you doing tonight again, Asa? <laughs> again, I am doing fantastic. I'm happy to be here. Thank you guys again so much for having me. Yeah, I'm We're I'm happy thrilled. you're here. Yeah, it's it's great to, to have you on. Like One of the things we really want to do here is to just not pack our shows with just the same looking dudes over and over again. That's really <laughs> important to us that we have just a host of different voices, people with different experiences um, to share what, you know, to share their point of view on the news with us, because some of this stuff, it's like it's it's hard to imagine you know, how it impacts different people of different backgrounds. So I'm really glad we could have you on uh, to discuss everything that's going on. Um, usually I save this for the end of the show, but because you might not be as familiar to our guests as everyone else, I want to do it at the beginning and at the end so everyone catches where you're <laughs> from. Uh, so plug whatever you want to plug, man. Go for it. Okay, yeah. So um, I, uh, I run a group called Borderline Entertainment. So we have Twitch streams every week on twitch.tv slash borderline entertainment. That's gameplay, a lot of community streams, so I'm really big into being with our community and hanging out with them, so we do a lot of community gaming. And then on YouTube, it's your your basic run-of-the-mill content of video <laughs> reviews, podcasts, things like that, but we do have some special things coming. So, And then if you want like more of my particular opinions, then I'm on Twitter at agreenriver07, but Borderline Entertainment is where the cool stuff's at. Nice. nice. And, and you got a great video nice. that uh, Kind of Funny just recently shared. Um, I think you can find it over at kindoffunny.com slash Asa, right? Which speaks to, speaks to your more yes. personal experiences. Yeah. So it is Native American Heritage Month. And uh, I myself am Comanche. And it's, a, it's a, a really big important thing for me to get some awareness out there. So I did a talk, a conversation with myself and my sister. Um, and it was received so well that we're actually doing a follow-up conversation next week. Uh, on Monday with some nice. indigenous and native people uh, from across the, the video game industry. So I'm really, really excited about That's that. That's so, so cool. That is really cool. I yeah, love that. Is, that. that yeah, is awesome, and man. We've got people from, from all walks of life. We have I've got a writer on there, a voice actor, a, a game dev. So literally you'll be able to hear so many amazing perspectives. And I'm just, I'm so thrilled for that. That is awesome. I can't wait to check that out. So um, when that comes out, we'll make sure Same. we retweet it, of course. Um, Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, I, I can't wait to see it. I, I watched the beginning of the video. Today's been a crazy day, and I was watching it. I was, and I ended up watching that instead of your Kind of Funny run. So if you don't know, Asa also <laughs> recently co-hosted Kind of Funny Games Daily. So there's that out there as well now, right? Is that live yet yeah. for non-patrons? Yeah. Okay. That, um, I, I believe it. So we were live at 1 o'clock Eastern. I I realize that so many people prefer Pacific, but Eastern time for me. Hey, I'm on Eastern. And, I'm, I'm all uh -huh. for it. <laughs> okay, yeah, perfect. And then uh, it went on YouTube and podcast services like a few hours later. So it's out there for everybody. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's, that's uh, totally fair. So It's funny. Uh, it's, it's almost as though our video template knows the time zones we're in, too, because Steve and I are here on the left, and Derek, <laughs> you, you two are on the right. I love that. They yeah, that the, was... uh, the, right, the, the people that are right are... On the right. <laughs> yeah, well, wow, see, now you, had, you had to take it to a different level. I wasn't going all there. I just you know. <laughs> had to take it to a philosophical place. Mm. Right. <laughs> all right. So are you all ready to break down tonight's news today? Oh, so today's so. news. Always. Tonight. Yeah. All right. News so tonight. let's go ahead and jump into our first story. This one comes to us courtesy of VG247.com. And it, Mortal Kombat 11 is getting skin packs based on the campy cheesy 90s movie which i just love this uh, i'm gonna read what they wrote real quick so it says uh the latest skin pack for mortal kombat 11 brings a few classic looks to nether realm's bloody brawler the classic mk skin pack introduces the voices and likenesses of christopher lambert lyndon ashby and bridget wilson uh simpress from the sampras i think sampras mm -hmm. sorry from the 1995 yes. mortal kombat film that's the coolest and thing I'm just realizing. Let's let's hop I, back. I so, wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if that would happen what? or if you it did say it anything did. or not. But it did. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay. Still some kinks to work out. Basically, so I'll read this to you real quick now that it's been on screen for a while. Uh, it says, "Well, this is a blast from the past. The latest skin pack from Mortal Kombat 11 brings a few classic looks." 
Uh, to Another Realm's Bloody Brawler, Classic MK Skin Pack introduces the voices and likenesses of Christopher Lambert, Linda Nashby, and Bridget Wilson Sampras from the iconic 95 Mortal Kombat film to the game. Uh, so that is super cool. Like, I love it's this so cheesy cool. ass oh, movie. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I'm I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of this. So I'm I'm really excited to see that these uh, these characters are coming back in this way. Like this this is one of those things I wouldn't have expected. We were talking about Mortal Kombat 11 <laughs> when they announced Rambo and uh, yeah. Melina mm -hmm. and Rain, and I was like, I I love how just kind of weird Ed Boon is getting with this. Like Same. like they've they've reached a yeah. point where it's just kind of crazy now and i i don't yeah. really know yeah i, I love I, it i i love, I, I love it, how they have their own unique like they have their own voices too like they're not just redoing all the stuff that they say normally yeah i really yeah really hope with christopher lambert they got like one of his victories uh Me quotes too. is literally the <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh man, that yeah. would be. Funny. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I love that that Ed Boon and I'm sure there are hardcore Mortal Kombat players who might disagree with this, but I, I do love that Ed Boon and NetherRealm Studios seem to have a pretty good idea. Like they have their finger on the pulse of what Mortal Kombat fans actually want in terms of the yeah. legacy content that makes them happy. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you could find examples that that go against that. But I feel like with this classic skin pack, you know, it's it's cool that that Ed Boon and company are aware that people love the the old movie the classic movie and and still regard these actors and actresses as legitimate versions of these characters beloved versions of these characters even well Absolutely. one of the things i'm thrilled about is that they got that we have an alternative to ronda rousey as sonia now that is a nice that is a, <laughs> yes immediately that's a yeah. man she's so much win. better than ronda rousey <laughs> well if ronda yeah. rousey wasn't a terrible person to begin with exactly i mean i want her out on those grounds alone but on top of that, she just did a bad job. Like she wasn't a yeah. very good voice actress. No, and so I was, was just not. like, man, this is this is a win all around. <laughs> See, it's I a was more. This... I was Go just going to say that I, this to me this is a litmus test because mm -hmm. if we can get a lot of people to download this, there's a potential that we could maybe get the entire movie cast to get oh, their yeah. likenesses into so this. So great! I, I yeah. want yes. Robin Shu for Liu Kang, and I, I don't know the actor's name so for. Uh, Shang, Tsung? Shang Tsung, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was... Well, Shang, Shang Tsung is already in the game. The guy, yeah, he's already in it. Oh, yeah. is he? I didn't realize him in Yeah, he's not like the movie role, but it is the same actor. So yes. I mean, just it's re record. Very, yeah. Get more in there. Come yeah, on. I was gonna say they <laughs> yeah. they do yeah. they do have him say your soul is mine, like in the in yeah the game. Which of, and I yeah. love that so much. <laughs> and it seems like they did I, yeah. give him some custom lines because they they dropped a trailer with. Uh, his Shang Song interacting with Christopher Lambert's Raiden. So there was some unique dialogue there that I don't remember him saying before this character pack came in. So there's a good chance that we could see more unique dialogue between just these movie version characters, which is like as a lover of these films, I'm that would so be so cool. That. Yeah. I, I need I, them to bring back Goro, though. So movie exactly. I was can just going to say the same thing. I was just going to say the same thing. I totally had to look up her name. I'm not going to even lie and say that I knew it by heart, but I'd love to get Talisa Soto as back as Katana as well. I always really yeah. liked her Katana yeah, she was in the good. movie. I, I didn't yeah. know who that was. I, I mean, to be fair, yeah, I didn't know who like not even a lie that I'm that much of a. Uh, I know that much about actors and actresses by by heart. I I wonder <laughs> if like for April Fool's Day they'll give us Mortal Kombat Annihilation skins. <laughs> I oh was my just god! Thinking the same Can you Sindel? I want that Sindel Sin skin oh, yes. Sindel. from Annihilation. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh man, that I would mean, be great. It, as long as they don't take in like the replacement Raiden and then the replacement Sonya Blade, I'm pretty sure everyone else would be good to come over, right? I would. Think I would, so. I would I think, think so. so. Everyone else is a fresh face, I believe, in Annihilation. Mm -hmm. I On top of right. new characters. Yeah, Do we yeah. know who played Scorpion in the original Mortal Kombat movie, though? Like, I mean, they I mean, never yeah. showed his face. It was yeah. it was yeah. just it was probably just a stunt man with the line. Same guy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's the same Reptile. guy who played Sub Zero. I think they both played. Or they the same I mean, guy that, played both Ninja. That tracks with Which the games. So. Makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. he was know, also. I could uh, be wrong about Reptile. that though. On yeah. on the subject of this, I would really really love it if they released a. Uh, a skin pack that was all the original actors from the original Mortal Kombat. 
Oh like, man, that would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny Cage is like cool. swim trunks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The dollar store. Man, now I can't. Costumes. Now I can't stop thinking about how, how badly I actually do want a Sindel Annihilation skin, but only if one of her they just somehow get that. Too bad you will die <laughs> line in there somehow. I don't know how. I don't know what the context so is, but oh, it has man. to be in there. Yeah. I want I want movie Kano too. He was pretty cheesy. Oh, movie yeah. Kano yeah. is movie great. Kano is yeah, I, I used to I, yeah. I used to walk into rooms like because I was young and dumb, and I'd always be like, "Hello, baby." Did you yeah. miss me? I, I Hello, think baby. the movie is why Kano ended up Australian in all future games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think know. He was originally Australian. <laughs> I think that's yeah. I think that's where that that part of his character kind of came from. I think Kano was just such a an iconic role in that movie that they kind of played off that in future uh, you know canon appearances. Mm-hmm. By the way, Richard Herrera in the chat uh, said that Kerry Tagawa was the actor who played Shang yep. Tsung. So. And he is absolutely the okay. dude still in the game, mm. which is so... I, I thought that I was cool, that. and I, yeah. I think... I, I wonder if that was the catalyst for this. Like, they were like, oh, well, we got Carrie, and people seem to love it, so let's get everyone else that we can. I feel I like mean, that, plus the, the success of, like, Rambo, Terminator, and RoboCop, like, just bringing oh back goodness. these old nostalgic faces probably played a huge role in that. I just today like re-downloaded Mortal Kombat 11 on my PS5 because I forgot that there was a next gen upgrade that came out like last week for it oh there is it looks it looks a lot better like a lot sharper but that game is just so much fun to play like it is one of these rare instances where a developer gets swallowed up by like a mega corporation and it turns out great (laughs) I I think it's one of those where it's just so good that Warner Brothers is doesn't want to mess with it and they found a way to make the DLC uh, desirable, <laughs> not yeah. predatory. Well, and NetherRealm's really good at that in general. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I still, I, and I, it would be a little bit too much probably to see them in Mortal Kombat, but I'm still blown away every time I play Injustice Two and I play as, as the Ninja Turtles. Yes, that they oh, yeah. got oh the God, turtles. Got they. they nailed the, the look, the the yep. characters, the feel, everything about the turtles. Like it, it, it's everything that made the movie version. The Team and T one movie version of the Turtles, so mm-hmm. freaking cool! It's mm-hmm. all distilled in their Injustice two appearances, and I want to see them come back. Maybe not. Mortal Kombat might be too much. I don't know. I but don't know I if we want to see, see their back. hearts getting ripped out one now. I don't know. If yeah, could take maybe, it. maybe Injustice three. Maybe yeah. <laughs> they did do DC versus uh, uh, Mortal Kombat. Or well, whatever. We don't talk. I remember the, they the did, exact yeah. title. Yeah, but I remember that, still, yeah. like that is an opportunity to say, hey, look it there were some people who liked it. Maybe we can just take all these characters, all the, the DLC ones from Injustice, um, take all the cool 90s ones from Mortal Kombat, and let's just make an, an, a movie TV icon fighting game. That's what I want. Oh, that would be really you cool. You know that's what they want to do, too, cool. between Freddy, yes. Jason, RoboCop, uh, Rambo. They put so who, much love into it. Who were, yeah. who were we missing? Like these action 80s icons. I mean, multiple Schwarzeneggers. We could have Schwarz- Schwarzenegger versus Schwarzenegger <laughs> yeah. just have them be like... Uh, what was his name? What was his name in Commando? And just have all the, get Schwarzenegger do all his pun Dutch. lines again. Listen, if if they bring in Arnold Schwarzenegger from Commando, I absolutely demand that they make a skin that is Phil Spencer using an Xbox Series X as a bazooka. <laughs> <laughs> like it has to happen. <laughs> That'd be pretty great. I can't let that uh, that one slide. Uh, like make it. That would be the best Xbox exclusive DLC I could think of. Oh, Snake Plissken. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, Snake Plissken. There you go. I mean, yeah, and good that one. is a really great idea because. Um, Big Trouble in Little Tokyo basically served as the Little inspiration China. for Raiden, or Big Trouble in Little China served as the inspiration for Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Oh, that's like, such a fun movie, right. too. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, I feel like the original Tron would be pretty cool to get in there. Oh, yes. Disney would yes. not allow that to happen. Oh, no, they would Tron. never let it, never no, let it, it happen, amazing. but it would be really cool. Yeah. Bruce Willis from Die Hard is, is definitely a good Oh, choice. yeah, like, of the course. Chat is, yeah. The yeah. chat is dropping so, great suggestion yeah See, this seriously. is a great idea we, we need uh a, a jean-claude van damme bro- role in there that needs the i mean sport. that's ba- oh man that would be like a yeah. mirror match between jean-claude van damme and johnny cage which would be amazing <laughs> right i would so it, good. It, it, it man in there oh it man that would be it a man. good one too. yeah oh yeah. man i'm loving this game that doesn't exist john wick <laughs> This is, oh, there. John Wick. John freaking Wick that, has got to be in this game. That's yeah. so many. You know, that works. That works. I do have a gunfighter in Man, the, I think uh, we need Kombat. to pitch this to yeah, uh, NetherRealm, you guys. I think this is a good I idea. Know. You know, Ed Boon is surprisingly, like, available in public. Like, I, when I go to E3 yeah. every year, yeah. I just see him, like, hanging around the WV booth, like, just out there. He's one of the most accessible developers I've ever met. 
I'm sure I, he's yeah. heard this kind of thing before. Oh yeah, I'm sure he hears it all oh, the time. Certainly. I had, and that's that's why he's doing it in DLC form right now. Mm. You know, it was yeah. so funny though when I uh, met him for the first time like two years ago. He was out there, and you know, I've run into other people that I, I'm not gonna lie, I admire much more, like uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, Eiji Aonuma, like mm. my my mm. heroes. You know, but for some reason, when I met Ed Boon. I was way more nervous. I was like, I don't know, really? because I, I mean, I had to confess to being like 11 years old and playing Mortal Kombat. I was like, <laughs> I really like the way you let me rip heads off when I was a little kid, Ed Boon. Thank you. I mean, it's it's not, it, it's inherently wholesome to tell someone you liked Mario as a kid. But I mean, I, I, I was like, what if I'm he just I'm pretty sure Boon like, knew that kids were playing this oh, yeah. back in the oh, day. Yeah. I'm sure he yes. did. But I mean, also, he had to be like, what kind of parents did you have? Get away from me. <laughs> like, uh-huh. yeah. I mean, I saw, I saw Mortal Kombat, you know, in '95. So when I was ten, so I was that fair. Age. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's fair. I saw it too. I was I was thirteen. Oh, okay. It's a long time <laughs> <Wow>. ago. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, so. maybe maybe for you, Steve. I don't know about you, but I'm still a young spring chicken. So I'm you know, no. I'm, speak I'm for all of us here. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I'm on death's <laughs> yeah. door, basically. Uh huh. <laughs> all right. Let's try this. We're going to cut to our next story. Let's find out if everything falls over. <laughs> so, moving on. Story number two. I'm, you know what? I'm going to just bring up the chat real quick. Just keep it at the front of my screen. All right. Moving on to story attitude. number two. Here it is. Uh, this comes also courtesy of uh, VG247. Uh, soon you'll be able to play Red Dead Online without owning Red Dead Redemption 2. Rockstar has announced it will release Red Dead Online as a standalone game on December 1st. You'll be able to purchase it from the PlayStation Store, Microsoft Store, Rockstar Games Launcher, whatever that is, the Epic Game Store, and Steam. It'll cost $4.99, which is 75% off of the regular price until February 15th, and it takes up a whopping 100 23 gigs Jesus. of space. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's cool. That's sure. bigger than Red Dead and Red Dead Online were when it came out. I, That's they, like why is the file size so big? That's what I'm wondering. That's a good I question. Mean, it is it is a a really interesting question. So, I'm I'm going to be honest. I f- I played all of Red Dead 2 and I liked it. Mm-hmm. I liked it, but I felt like it started to fall apart. The the controls for me were just real bad. I didn't okay, like really. managing multiple cores and gauges and I I felt like it was I I mean, I understand they were going for like as as realistic as possible, but at the same time I was like I don't want to get my shit out of the horse saddle bag every time I need to get into a gunfight. I don't want to yeah. have to feed my horse an apple and make sure that it restores the core <laughs> that can then refill the gauge. I was like, there's there's too much going on for me to manage. I, it's the same reason a long time ago, again, dating myself, that I bounced off of GTA San Andreas. There was just, like, too much going on. It, it, mm-hmm. it's, it became more about the management for me and not the gameplay. Like, I was like, oh, I gotta manage all this different moving stuff um and because of that like red dead online just never clicked for me i mean first off for me like all the rockstar online games are not about like playing for me they're about like just griefing people (laughs) i'm not gonna lie like my i I invite my friends in and i'm like please come play with me and the subtext to that is please let me lasso you and drag you into a lake before i execute you um (laughs) So and uh, GTA Online, I'm I'm like awful. I'll I'll share a story about this. But Ace, I want to throw this to you. Uh, are you yeah. like a big Red Dead guy, or how do you? Yeah. So I'm I'm a big Rockstar fan. When it comes to GTA Five and and Red Dead Redemption Two, I actually didn't really touch the single player at all. I jumped oh, wow. straight into online. Huh. Um, and it wasn't that I I didn't want to play the single player. I'm actually very interested in it. But for me, there's so much depth to the multiplayer that I can just get lost in these worlds. And I also like, I build up my own stories. I, <laughs> I, I'm building up my, my imagination just goes wild. And, uh, you know, I'm either, I'm Wyatt Earp. I'm, I'm the, the U S marshal, just like taking justice into my own hands. Or if it's like GTA <laughs> five, I'm, I'm James Bond, just, uh, doing whatever I can do to, to take out the bad guy. Um, and so like, I'll just create my own stories. And like you said, play with friends and grief people. And, um, when it comes to red dead online, 
I feel like it has the same amount of depth as the story, and I'm saying that with as much of an asterisk as is possible because again i i've played just a little bit of the the main storyline but it really seems that there's the depth that you're talking about in the story in gta or in red dead online so this actually gets me really really excited well at least it did before you told me the file size because (laughs) i was thinking maybe i could bring my file size down and just do online and uninstall the story but now it seems like that would be a waste of time yeah. yeah. Yes. The 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 online yeah. is 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 really good, and this is really needed because they they don't give Red Dead Online the love that they do GTA Online. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I really? mean, I'm I'm a GTA mm-hmm. Online addict. I mean, yes. it's and and they're constantly like, there's, I mean, what we're five years on now, and there's just constant updates, even more than well, that. I think. didn't like, they just yeah, announce that they're putting coming. out a new island? Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. yeah it's coming about out that. very soon. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I haven't played GTA Online in a really long time. I, I think I'm sitting on like a hundred million dollars in the game. I <laughs> own a yacht. I own a building. I can't remember all the crap that I've bought in GTA Online. But Gotta buy the it bunker. Was Come on. All for the purpose of killing my friends. Like <laughs> I, re- I remember when I first because I I came into a bunch of money because I killed someone with like a hundred million dollar bounty on their head. Oh, and God, so like best. I bought it. I bought a helicopter. The first thing I bought was a helicopter and like a single brick of C4. <laughs> and I, I put it on my helicopter and I picked up all my friends. I'm like, I'm going to go show you guys my yacht that I bought. I didn't own a yacht. <laughs> and I, I put them in the helicopter and we were like headed towards my fake yacht. And I just jumped out and detonated the helicopter with them all inside. <laughs> my friends don't play with me anymore. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I, I, I played this not game surprised. with you. I, I don't really yeah. gravitate towards multiplayer experiences. So this is absolutely not for me. Uh, I'd much rather just experience a story. Same. That said, I did not go gravitate towards Red Dead Redemption 2. It was just felt too divisive, and I wasn't sure about it. Um, despite Red Dead Redemption being one of the only Rockstar games I actually beat the story in, mm-hmm. um, never really bothered before. I always get to a certain point and be like, eh, I'm done, and didn't see it to the end. But Red Dead Redemption really kept my interest, but something about 2 just never clicked. Maybe it was all the... <clears throat> just talk around it and I, I don't know it just didn't seem like it would I doesn't seem like something I would enjoy compared to the original but the fact that it is that engaging on online for online maybe not a bad idea though I have seen concern because of Rockstar's focus on on these online modes that might be a while until we see a Red Dead Redemption 3 a Grand Theft Auto 6 it's, yeah. it's like they're putting more effort into this which can't blame them because apparently it just makes them all the money a ton of money yeah yeah i mean I, i'm the same as you derek i don't really i'm not a big rockstar guy personally and i don't play these kinds of multiplayer experiences online typically i did play ghost of tsushima legend with steve for a stream a few weeks back and i love that That's but typically great. my online stuff is you know it's smash fall guys maybe mario kart sometimes but yeah, I, I don't really get in, involved in these kinds of more community-based games. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I have heard a lot about how Red Dead Online has been kind of getting shafted and not getting a lot of yep. attention from Rockstar. Oh, absolutely. Um, so it is nice to hear that they're actually you know, paying attention now and, and mm-hmm. releasing it as a standalone game. Again, that file size, I don't know about that. In fact, there was uh, somebody, yeah, Etienne Ben in the chat said... More game devs need to start sipping that secret sauce Nintendo is drinking that grants them forbidden file compression knowledge because, God, <laughs> game files are huge. And that is so true. I yep. I couldn't dedicate over 100 gigs of space Mm-mm. to just well, that. But then again, I'm also not the audience for it. So We we just talked about uh, Mortal Kombat 11's next-gen upgrade. That's over 100 gigs. What? So, what? Yeah. yeah. Mortal Kombat uh, is over 100 gigs now on PS5. Oh my so, gosh. I mean, it, it does seem to me that. Jeez. Yeah. And I, I don't think that it looks good enough to justify it being that large. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. Red Dead 2, at least I can be like, oh, well, that's a massive open world game. I'm like, Mortal yeah. Kombat's a fighting game with, you know, that's essentially <laughs> two dimensional. Like, how did you do this? Uh, if, yeah. Maybe they just didn't compress anything. I don't know. But, um,. Yeah, it seems it seems very very strange, but I do agree with Mark Cole. Uh, RDR two gets extremely short sh- shrift yeah. from Rockstar. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. one of those games where it's like it could have it, it had the potential. I mean, mm-hmm. 
with the original Red Dead Redemption on 360, that was my game for that generation. Like, I played that all the time. I 100%ed it. I 100%ed the DLC. And when I was done with that, that was like my weeknight go-to with my group yep. of friends. Like, we would hop into multiplayer and play it for hours. For nice. months on end, we did that. And I was, I mean, that alone, you know, was was worth the price of entry for RDR2 for me. I was like, Red Dead 1 earned my RDR2 money. So, um, <laughs> you know, no, no matter what they released, I was going to buy it. I wasn't going to listen to what anybody said. I was going to buy it. I played through it. I, it didn't reach those heights that the original reached for me. But I think if they had iterated on the online the way they did with GTA, then I would definitely be playing it right now. Mm -hmm. Like, it would, mm -hmm. it would be my go-to game. But... <laughs> Yeah, they've definitely given GTA Online a disproportionate amount of focus. And I assume that's just because that's where the money is. Well, and what's really interesting about that is, to me, GTA Online is, it's really built for that, um, like the PS3, 360 era. You can tell that the mechanics in place are really stuck in that era because Red Dead Online is far and above, at least like mechanically and the things that they've baked into it way ahead of GTA Online. I mean, there's like oh, actual yeah. cutscenes, like actual NPCs and storylines like there you mm -hmm. you build your base. The whole I mean the whole thing starts off you're you're I don't want to spoil it for people, but it starts off you're helping this lady get revenge on this gang uh who betrayed her husband. Like there is an actual storyline built into mm -hmm. Red Dead Online to where that's why I never touched the main storyline because I'm still playing this story. It's it's almost like uh, Interesting, a, yeah. a Red Dead Redemption 2.5, if you will. Yeah, so I did cool. not know that. I thought it was – when I, I played a little bit of GTA Online, it just seemed like, eh, futz around online with friends and that's about it. And I just like, no, oh, yeah. that's just oh, not for me. And I just assumed that was the same that. for Red Dead. Yeah, there is that, but there's just so much more. It's You can't play GTA 5 online and think, okay, well, Red Dead Online is going to be the same thing, but a Western skin when it does so much more. Right. For sure. I, I yeah, definitely well, I think, agree with that. I think earlier in the chat, Luxiel summed up the giant file size perfectly when they said horse poo texture is sure is heavy. <laughs> and that's clearly the reason that, yep, that this thing it. is so massively definitely large. Yeah, An 8K horse poo texture just taking up yeah. 80 gigs. <laughs> All right. So with that in mind, <laughs> uh, speaking of a way to mitigate those those incredibly large sizes, we have our third story. Let's go ahead and throw it up on the screen real quick. All right, so this one, um, basically, M Microsoft is in the early phases of rolling out its xCloud streaming service on multiple devices, but TVs are the next logical step, according to The Verge. Uh, Phil Spencer revealed that we'll likely see an Xbox app appear on smart TVs over the next year. And he's, to specifically quote him, he says, I think you're, you're going to see that in the next 12 months. I don't think anything <laughs> is going to stop us from doing that. So... Eh, Game Pass on TV, X Cloud on, yeah. on just built into yeah. your TV. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, that is that's I mean, compelling. We, yeah, we've been talking a lot about Microsoft's mm -hmm. ambitions, kind of extending beyond <clears> a <throat> piece of hardware, and it just seems like they're at this point they're they're not even hinting anymore. They're just like they may as well just say, yeah. I mean, who needs an Xbox? Like, just <laughs> give us give yeah. us fifteen dollars a month forever instead. <laughs> yeah, I, really, all they need to do at this point is like, all right, here's a streaming stick, kind of like what you have with like the Chrome Chromecast, and that comes with a controller. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, I it's think really, it goes, yeah. I think it extends beyond that. I'm thinking, yeah, I do too. That like on smart mm. TVs, like the OLED that Ash and I now have. Um, there's like a host of built-in apps. There's the Apple TV built-in app, stuff like that. I think you're just going to see Xbox in that yep. list. And yeah. you hop in so and there's your games. And you can play next-gen, you know, crazy, beautiful games just directly on your TV. I mean, with, you know, added latency or whatever. But, I mean, still, the idea that you can go from having to spend 500 bucks for a console to $15 a month and, and 60 for a controller and you're set with all of Microsoft's first party releases for as long as you stay subscribed, that's crazy. That mm -hmm. is really, really yeah. crazy. I'm hyped about this. This is like future of gaming kind of stuff. When I think about mm -hmm. it, I don't necessarily like it, but I'll dig more into my feelings on that later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ash, as a, as a fellow LG OLED owner, I want to know what you, what your take on this is and, and someone who doesn't own an Xbox. 
Yeah, I mean, well, this is definitely the way to get me as, as kind of a non, you know, I, I have nothing against Xbox. I just don't, I'm not really into a lot of Xbox franchises, so I don't really feel the need to own one a lot of the time, other than like Forza Horizon. But this is the way to get me to subscribe to to Xbox Game Pass or, or get me into the Xbox ecosystem, because I don't if I don't have to buy an Xbox Series X, but I can just stream them natively through my smart TV... I think for me, it just comes down to how good is the service itself? How's latency you know, relative to my own internet connection? You know, it, it, that's that's what it comes down to for me because I subscribed to PlayStation Now for a hot minute just to see, and mm-hmm. it was cool. But there is enough latency there to where I was like, you know, this wouldn't this wouldn't ever replace traditional gaming for me. I would still rather play through mm-hmm. my console. But mm-hmm. if XCloud and, and this Xbox app could get it to a point where it's at least close enough. Sure, why not subscribe, right? I mean, I, I'm still going to have a PS5, and I, you know, I'm, I'm going to get one no matter what. But yeah, I, I mean, if if the the actual quality of the service is good enough, such that it feels pretty appreciable, appreciably similar, yeah, I, I would subscribe. Why not and get an Xbox controller? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think that's an that's a pretty pretty reasonable take. Uh, Asa, what do you think? Is this something that you'd go for? I don't even know if you're an Xbox guy. Do you own an Xbox um, or? I do, so you, do you see this beautiful baby? Right <laughs> I didn't here? notice that. Oh wow, <laughs> I, I didn't notice that. There we go. So you're definitely is, an Xbox guy. I I paid a pretty penny to get this from one of the original people who worked nice. on, on Xbox Live. Um, <laughs> for for those on the internet who think that I hate Xbox for whatever reason, <laughs> um, no, this is I've said it time and time again that. Microsoft and Xbox, they are, they're on another level. They are playing a different game. You know, Sony's in the traditional console space, and that's perfectly fine. Nintendo is doing Nintendo. That's always been fine. But Xbox has their sights set on literally everyone. You know, they've, I I don't want to say they've mastered the traditional console space because I, you know, I think PS4 handed it to them last generation, and so they've got a lot of ground to make up. But with introducing the Game Pass xCloud uh, integration and then having the almost Joy-Con-esque controllers for like the Samsung phones, you know, they're, I don't want to say they're coming mm-hmm. after Switch, but like they're definitely trying to hit that handheld market in a way. And then now this, it's like Luna, Stadia, who? Like for, for me, it's like yeah. they're trying to just be the service for you. You don't need yeah. anything else. We have the option, you know, and I think to what you said before, I agree. I don't think that they're going to give you a stick or a, um, a plug in like a Chromecast, because if we look at the issue that Stadia is having, they release their brand new Chromecast and Stadia doesn't even work with it. They have oh, to do a patch yeah. later on. Yeah. Um, so Microsoft is smart. They're not going to take that step. They're they're going to make it a baked in app. And that's it's it's brilliant. I think that this is a huge power play, which is a little weird to to think about but it's impressive nonetheless yeah, yeah I, it's, it's an interesting approach compared to mm-hmm. what sony and nintendo are doing and it's, it's interesting because you know for better and worse sony and nintendo are always going to retain their own value through their exclusives that's not yes, really the game yes. microsoft is playing so mm-hmm. no matter what microsoft can go for everybody else but as long as ratchet and clank is exclusive to sony <laughs> you know horizon Mario, Zelda, all those exclusives, PlayStation and Nintendo have that hardware ownership on lock yep. while Microsoft is free to go for everybody else. It's an interesting dichotomy here that, that we're seeing play out for the first time, and I'm really curious to see how it how it all goes long term. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, Derek, you yeah. were saying. Well, I was going to say, just uh, going into the latency thing with Ash, I've not tried it myself, but I remember John talking about trying out xCloud I think when it was on beta or something like that right back in September and he was playing it on the handheld version had the, like the, the switch hookups for that uh, thing and apparently he could not notice any couldn't notice any latency at all just worked completely fine as is and if they can maintain that make that work Microsoft's on to something and I, I like mm-hmm. As Asa yeah. said, each company is doing something a little different, and I kind of like that. It makes each one have value. It's not all of a sudden less of a competition between the three. It's just like, what do you want? Do you want third-party games and ease of use for not having, not having to buy a console? Do you want a port, more portable machine with Nintendo exclusives? Or do you want something more traditional thanks to Sony and their exclusives? It's right. Each one has their own value that people might want to pick up. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. waiting for the day that we get the in, uh, fe- seemingly inevitable 
xCloud app on Switch. I feel like that is... It's going that to happen. Yeah. yeah, I feel like, like that happen. has to happen. And that's they probably when I'll get towards it. that years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just... I mean, they're, they're aping the form factor of the Switch on smartphones now to play xCloud. So, Microsoft, come on. Like, quit making us wait. <laughs> like, that would mm-hmm. be the dream that that would not only strengthen my desire to continue to subscribe i'm i'm subscribed to xcloud for like the next three years already so i'm good nice. they've already <laughs> got their hooks in me but i mean that would just put me like on lock for life like give me give me my favorite nintendo console with already loads of native games and then just be like hey mm-hmm. all that hd 4k stuff that you really want to play too that's now on the switch but you have to give microsoft 20 bucks i'd be like yeah okay take it take it forever yeah. <laughs> like the, i'm, I'm may- good maybe microsoft is waiting for the switch pro <laughs> yeah i mean maybe yeah, they are I, exactly you know, i i was thinking about this i was thinking about if Nintendo releases something that can just play back 4K video, right? Doesn't need to play games in 4K, but can handle Mm -hmm. a 4K video stream. You could then play xCloud games on the Switch in 4K, and it would look almost as good as if you had a Series X hooked up to your TV. I mean, that's there, there would be a difference, <laughs> but it would be, would it be 600 or 500 bucks worth of difference? Probably not. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> that to me is nope. absolutely bonkers. And I hope that that's the future we're headed toward because I, I can tell you that I, I would, if I were PlayStation, I'd be sweating bullets about that possibility. Yeah. I'd be sweating bullets about it being on every TV, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, I think there's, so. there's this weird intentional paradigm shift that's happening whereas like if you think back to the the ps3 360 era you you had an xbox and a wii and a playstation Mm -hmm. and a wii so like the wii was always something that you you always had it it was always in every single home um but for most people it was a secondary console um i don't think that was necessarily nintendo's plan but that's just the way it ended up but i think now that xbox wants to they want to be in that position so you you bought your switch you bought your PS5, but you also have Xbox somewhere. Yep. You've, you've got Xbox mm-hmm. on your TV, your your PC, your phone, whatever it is. They just want you to be in their ecosystem. So you have, so you can say, I have a PS5 and an Xbox. Even though you might not own a Series S or X, you're still within mm-hmm. their ecosystem. And that's where their heads are at now. Yep. I remember yes. Perfect sense. back in 2007... On the IGN message boards, you were either Team PS Wii or Team uh, Wii 60. <laughs> yep. And so, right, I remember that. I do, yeah. yeah. I yeah. was a Wii 60. Yeah, I was, I was too. PS Wii. I was, I was PS Wii, I think. Well, no, Once. actually, I'm a Wii 60. No, I was P- Wii 60 because the PS3 was such a mess at launch. Yep, I was going to say, mm-hmm. I was definitely Team Wii yeah. 60 until Metal Gear Solid came out for the PS3, and then I was PS <laughs> yeah. Wii 60. I didn't get either That's pretty much PS3 exactly or 360, and yeah. Because there still wasn't enough exclusives on the P- uh, the 360 for me to get it, so I'm like, ah, we'll just wait until PS3 impresses me, and then Metal Gear Solid Four. Oh, man, yeah, see, I like there's there were so many exclusives. I can't get into it. You were you missed out on so much. I no, mean, like I, like being I an early friends, I was able to play some Halo. I was able to play mm-hmm. Bioshock. I was able to play Gears of War. There was good stuff there's... there, but it just wasn't quite enough for me to pull that trigger. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not gonna Don't lie. I picked it up. I picked it up for Perfect Dark Zero, which was a mistake. Um, yeah. But Geometry yeah. Wars. Yes. God okay. damn! I love that game. Yeah. My, Everybody my buddy, talked Geometry yep. Wars. My, my God. Buddy just, Geometry Wars. Yeah. Yeah. My best friend who is visiting, like who is probably somewhere in my house right now, just got the achievement for getting a million points without ever dying, and it was like something that nice. we both agreed it was just impossible. But he just what? nailed it. So Nick, if you're watching, congrats, man. That was awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, for me I, it was all about that uh ridge racer 6 i played ridge mm-hmm. racer 6 online non-stop during the early days of the 360 and geometry wars um but yeah that i think the the, the first half of the 360 generation is probably the biggest into xbox i've ever been like mm-hmm. i love the 360 oh man and then i like you steve i got a ps3 when mgs4 came out mm-hmm. yeah. and then i pretty much i used both but i think at that point the 360 kind of started sliding into somewhat obscurity for me and I use the PS3 more. Interesting. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, like towards the second half, once the PS3 Slim came out and it really hit its stride yeah. as a console, I started to drift away from my 360 and started focusing more on my PS3. Um, especially the more Microsoft tweaked like the damn near perfect interface they had for the 360. They're like, <sighs> hey, we're the changing. Blades. hated that. Yep. They're like, hey, blades yep. are gone. I was like, hey, me too. I'm out. So. <laughs> Same. I love the blade interface. Bring that back. I the know. The blade interface was so good. 
Sunday. This sounds like the start of a hashtag. Hashtag bring back the blades. I know, right? Bring back. Oh, we're getting yeah. a lot of bring back the fans in there. Uh, see, I was thinking, uh-huh. I, I was thinking Xenoblade at that point. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know, man. The the last generation of consoles was was amazing. I, I miss that that kind of feeling. But yeah, the Xbox I think kind of had it in the first half, and it was so weird that Sony managed to close that gap because that almost never ever happens. I mean. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it, what usually it's like whatever whatever happens in that those first few months after launch is it sets the tone for the rest of the generation. So, well, Microsoft ah. gave them that w- massive opening, right? Because that was you know when the PS3 Slim came out and started gaining steam was at the same time when when Microsoft started doubling down on everything but games, oh, motion yeah. control with Connect yeah. TV, oh, yeah, you know the overall living room experience, and, and I, that kind of soured people. Well, they the also brand they also bit. had huge QA problems with the original model of the 360. Yeah, they did. I yeah, remember did forget. being the smuggest little shit, like when everyone was getting <laughs> red rings, and I was like, ha, 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 I have no problems. I've had it since day one, and I was like, I moved my 360 to my living room, because at this point I shared an apartment with my brother, and I was like, wouldn't it be funny if my Xbox red ringed right now? And then it <laughs> actually did. You were and just I was, spitting in the face of God at that point. Yeah, I, that's I, I really Wow. I was I was so <laughs> furious. I was like, "How did this happen?" Like, I I just convinced myself. I was like, "I willed this into being by being a jerk about it." <laughs> and Got that karma. That's so funny. <laughs> yep, I I took it into GameStop. This was like back in the day when you could pay them twenty bucks and they'd replace your console for like any reason. And I was like, "I'm gonna throw this thing down the d- damn stairs." <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> but like, <laughs> the worst part well, see- of me was almost in the driver's seat. How, how, do, how does my situation get explained then? Because I didn't ever tempt fate like that, and I wasn't ever a little shit about it, and yet my Xbox red-ringed and my PS3, my original PS3, uh, yellow-lighted. You got oh, wow. so, the yellow light. Yeah, I got the I yellow do, light. <laughs> I, I Did you put I... your microwave on top of them or something? Like No, I don't know what happened. They just both, they both died. I had to replace both. I, I didn't get. I don't know if I got a yellow light at all, but I, I'll never forget when my original PS3 died, which did have the emulated PS3 back, uh, PS2 oh. backwards compatibility. Which oh yeah, that's the like, one that died for me. I it like hurt. I like that. I, I was like, okay, I'll take it. I can at least have that bit. Um, but yeah, it. I was in the middle of The Last of Us. Uh, quite oh. literally, I was in. The, I think the not the hospital like. The one point where Joel is fighting a guy in the puddle and almost gets drowned. Oh, that oh, fight man. scene was it's happening. It's about the li- yeah, about, yeah, halfway, it's about, about halfway through that that scene was happening, and all of a sudden just froze completely. And I'm like, "What's that happening?" Oh, Nothing no. responded. Wouldn't eject the disc. Wouldn't do anything. We literally to get the disc out, I had to take it apart and get it out, and wow, then just had to gosh. buy a slim PS3. And it's just like. Damn, Man, but that yeah. slim model PS3 was so cool looking. Oh yeah, <laughs> not not a great reason to have to do it. Um, <laughs> anyway, last gen was super super cool. Ready ready to so talk good. about something this gen, something something a Let's little more it. recent. All right, moving on. I get scared every time we do this. Uh, <laughs> Koei Tecmo <laughs> Games have announced that Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity has shifted three million copies since its worldwide worldwide release. On Friday, the 20th of November, that includes both physical and digital copies. This, to me, is holy crap. Like, it's the best-selling Warriors or Musou game ever. Like, that is, I mean... Already. (laughs) Well done. Like, my God. The thing I find hilarious about this is just last night we talked about how they announced this wouldn't be a series. And you know Koei Tecmo has to be like, but does it have to not be a series? why? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Could you yeah. Do any do more Zelda, Zelda games again? you need a sequel to? <laughs> yeah, that is... Uh, oof. I, uh, I just... I, I, I mean... Would be, uh, I would be very upset if I was a Koei Tecmo executive like at the success of this because I'm like, I really just need like yeah. one more of these. <laughs> for my for my fiscal year, please. Yeah. <clears throat> like I mean, maybe, yeah. I'm trying to think of any other franchises they could they could do this with. I mean, I want to see a Mario oh. Mushroom Kingdom Musou game. Let's let's get that going. I want oh. a Star Fox Musou game. That I could see that cool. working. I've not heard. Yeah, I could. T- yeah. yeah, let let me roll around in a Landmaster and blow away tons of Andross's foot soldiers or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh man, like almost mm-hmm. like a, what was the GameCube game? 
Uh, Assault. Uh, oh, Star Fox yes. Assault. Yeah. 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 Star Fox Assault made by Koei Tecmo with more of a Muso slant to it. And I'm all in. Hmm. So we got that, and then we're going to have our uh, Platinum Games Captain Falcon Brawler released at the same t- same day. <laughs> oh, please. I like, I like what we're, we're going here. Yeah. 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 I've, I've seen people ask for, like, Xenoblade Warriors, Kirby Warriors. There's a lot Kirby of Nintendo Warriors, Warriors really games cool. they could make, and it would be a lot of fun. Mm. Asa, um, I've got to I've gotta just throw this to you. Give, yes. give me your pitch for a Kirby Warriors, because <laughs> okay, I don't yeah. know how that would work. <laughs> oh, I could... Uh, I'll let Asa go. Go, Asa and Derek. You guys are on the right. Let's do it. Well, first, let me say that nothing's going to be as successful as Age of Calamity purely because of the Breath of the Wild tie-in. That is right. Yeah, sure. Um, Of course. But for Kirby Warriors, honestly, I'm just thinking Waddle Dee's everywhere. Uh (laughs) Can you just imagine just millions of Waddle Dee's everywhere? Um, But who all would you play as? Obviously, uh, Kirby, Mennonite. um, DDD. Would I mean, you play as DDD as well, a, maybe like thirty a different well, Kirby's you could, you could use? I mean that there is there, that's the thing. Um, would it be you like wonder about Warriors? characters? But then you look at Star Allies, all the Star Allies characters. Yes, make them yeah. playable. Yeah, perfect. And then just Kirby with all of his different abilities, highlight his different abilities, kind of like what they do with Link in Age of Calamity, where yeah. d- depending on the weapon he equips, you have that. And I'd they could even make it more that. interesting by having Kirby change it up at, at mid battle, <laughs> uh, depending on what he swallows. And, uh, oh, man, bring, bring in some of the super moves from the other ones, like Triple Deluxe, where he has the super suck or the powered up abilities from Return to Dreamland or, oh, give me Mech Kirby. Mech Kirby well, in, some, uh, 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 from Planet Robobot at times. That'd be amazing. Oh, I forgot about Planet Robobot. Mech Kirby and you can get some great, great uh, guest characters in, like, Galactonite, Marks. Like, there, there are a lot of villains mm-hmm. that you could really get some cool movesets out of, I think, in Kirby. Mm-hmm. You could get some callbacks to the uh, the old animated show too. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Right back <laughs> at you. Mm-hmm. I I really feel like I missed the boat on Kirby. Like I I feel oh, bad saying that, did. but I have just I I didn't get a Game Boy until mm-hmm. the Game Boy was almost replaced by the Game Boy Advance. Like I, I okay. think the f- I played Pokemon Red, Link's Awakening, and then I was onto a Color, and I played Pokemon Silver and Pokemon Yellow. <laughs> I think you can figure out where my taste <laughs> lied on the Game Boy. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. And then the Game Boy Advance came out, and I think that was the first, like, portable system that I truly could say I loved. Like, mm-hmm. I the yeah. Game Boy Advance, I remember, was the first time I felt like, oh, my God, I have a console in my pocket. Like, because mm-hmm. it felt to me basically mm-hmm. like a mini Super Nintendo, you know, with yeah. slightly better graphics, and I was, was in love with perfect. that thing. But, you know, I don't remember... You know, by that point, I just had zero attachment to Kirby as a character. And so the first time I really messed with Kirby was in Smash. I was like, oh, this guy's kind of cool. Like, I like this. (laughs) But we were kind of in that weird era where Kirby was was undervalued as a character by Nintendo at that point. And so there just wasn't a ton of cool looking stuff coming out. And I just I never got on board. Like, I, I still want to go back and play the old Kirby games, but I've. I've just never found the motivation. That uh, Kirby's Dream mm. Collection, that's a good way to experience the old games. Uh, Funny enough, so. I had Dreamland 2 growing up. Didn't really play any other Kirby games until uh, I got Kirby's Canvas Curse on the DS and did that whole mm. thing and then I got I back into game. it and then just found a way to play the old games again and really enjoy those. Um, I, I remember being really interested in Kirby 64 when I didn't Crystal have it in Nintendo 64 mm-hmm. just because hey, I remember Kirby, that looks great. Um, and I, but then I'm telling you, Triple Deluxe, Planet Robot, two of the best Kirby games out there, fantastic. Um, I think. I mean, uh, I think if you, Steve, if you were just just to go back and play like Superstar, Planet Robobot, and mm-hmm. Triple Deluxe, I think you're getting like the quintessential cream of the crop Kirby experiences right 2D there. 2D Kirby. Like, you don't need to go back and play yeah. every yeah. single... I mean, you should probably play Dream, the original Dreamland just for historical, you know... Well, you'll, historic, he'll get that in... History's sake. He'll get and that you can in play it in, like, 45 minutes. That's true. You gotta oh, nice. get that in Superstar. That's true. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think with those three games, you can experience the best of what Kirby has to offer. And then if you love that, you can go play the others. But mm, Kirby, nice. I've said this many times, Kirby's my favorite Nintendo character, period. Like, easily. Wow. Not even close. Wow, I love man. Kirby. I don't he's, think anybody... he is a cute pink 
like ball of death destroyer of gods he (laughs) destroys gods literally can eat whatever but all all he's ever doing all kirby's ever doing at the in, in any of these games he's eating strawberry shortcake dreaming about food just minding his own damn business. And then some eldritch abomination decides, well, I'm going to ruin Kirby's day. And they get what they pay for. <laughs> they, they, they exactly. Get what's it it to pretty them. much does come down to Kirby's trying to enjoy a, a snack. The snack gets yeah. destroyed or messed up. <laughs> Here we go again. I mean, how can you not love that? <laughs> I love Kirby. <laughs> and then you think it's like the simple thing. And poor, poor DDD gets possessed all the time. Kirby's Dreamland 3 will always yeah. have that bit where he was possessed and his stomach opened up like the thing. And like right. stomped oh, around. Like, there's some messed up <laughs> what imagery. <the> fuck? <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. Oh, Kirby gets I, now it I, goes there sometimes. It's weird, man. Now I need a gritty reboot of Kirby. Like, you don't need, need it. It's already reboot. there. <laughs> it's already there. Yeah. The, 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 the Eldritch horrors are already there. <laughs> you know who would be a, a great uh, mascot for a Muso game? Donkey Kong. Ooh. Oh, Donkey we already Kong. have that. That's I can see out. that. <laughs> Wait, what? Please is tell it? me someone's played Ape Out. No one's played. Ape oh out? yeah, I've, 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 I've seen heard of it, but Ape I don't think I've played, played it. Out, but I've never played it. I've seen it, but never. Played oh my god, it. man! Mm-hmm. Ape Out is exactly what I imagine if Donkey Kong just decided to actually go wild. Like, I mean, you're <laughs> literally just dismembering people, launching them out windows. Like, <laughs> you are you are a one and a one ape wrecking crew. Like, just killing everything in sight. Like, if you haven't played Ape Out. Please go play it. it. It is one of my favorite indie games on the Switch. Devolver routinely puts out really cool stuff, but I think mm-hmm. Ape Out kind of stands out among them. Like, the the soundtrack is so killer, and it's synced to every time you kill someone. So it's like, oh, it's wow. really, really good. Yeah. I think you're onto something, Steve, because Age of Calamity, as we know, it, it fills a very important role of, of, you know, showing us exactly what happened during the Great War oh, with you know, God, Calamity gosh. Ganon. Donkey Kong. I know great exactly where you're war. going. Let's play it. I want to play the Great Ape War, man. I think you're onto, onto something, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Well, to be fair, it was Ace's idea. I just said that. Find, the game find out why the Mankey no, True. My bad. Turned share, against them. We can them. share. We yeah. Can share it. <laughs> that that said, Donkey Kong versus hordes of Kremlings. That would be I cool. dig it. Yeah, that I'd would be, be cool. That. Yeah. I mean, all yeah. of his cousins. All yeah. of the different Let, Kongs. Jared Editor yeah. in the chat says, let's finally learn what happened to <laughs> K. Rule's eye. And I love that idea. <laughs> no, I'm not no, sure I'm I imagine... want to know what happened to K. Rule's eye. Because every time I see it, it makes me uncomfortable and, and vaguely grosses me out. <laughs> Donkey Kong no, just Now I'm just imagining him. power-ups where Donkey Kong does have his coconut gun or he jumps on the animal buddies and just imagining running around on Rambi plowing through all the enemies. I think there's real, there's yeah. real uh, potential in this. I want to see this happen. Oh, That's man. the it thing. Muso games are so adaptable. They really can fit just about any game out there, really. You could. It mm-hmm. would be really cool, honestly. Like Now that we're thinking about it, I'm not a huge DKC fan either. I like it. I, I think it's a great platformer, but it, it doesn't... I mean, I look at like the the deep love people have for it and I'm like, yeah, I'm not there. Like I, I don't have like this yeah, crazy, profound that. love for it, but no, I really? like it. Okay. Mm-hmm. But that said, even as someone who is a very casual fan of Donkey Kong, I would love it if they kept, or at least as an option, kept like the 1990s like CGI art style for the game. And mm-hmm. and like, yeah, I could just picture, it's one of those games where I could totally picture the damn trailer where it's like, uh-huh. you know, it, it's, <laughs> it's just a normal DKC level and there's like an enemy or two, you jump off them, you bounce, and then the camera just rotates and you see this wide open field just full of enemies and Donkey Kong just starts going <laughs> ham on them. I would I would be sold instantly. I don't care if that game runs at 2 FPS. I'm buying oh, it. Yeah. Can it not be I'd be into seven, that. please? I don't want to get sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd prefer <laughs> a, a real usable frame rate, but I, I'm not going to lie. Like you, that is that elevator pitch would be 100% effective on me. I'd be like, "Yep. Uh-huh. All right, cool. Yep. Pre-ordered." <laughs> <We're>, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, taking it back to Age of Calamity selling so well, maybe this will take the sting off the fact that presumably they've had to wait so long to release Persona 5 Scramble, and hopefully that'll do well because the fact that people saw the World Ends With You 2 trailer and immediately thought, oh, it's like Persona 5. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Right. You know, but it has you know would be funny. enough in that people might pick up Scramble because mm. of that. Yeah. What are What are the odds? that when they do finally announce the release date for Persona 5 Scramble, that they throw in 
from the makers of Age of Calamity in there. <laughs> like total. <laughs> yeah. Total. I could see that yeah. happening. Yeah. From the same guys that made that yeah. game you like. A different game. <laughs> so yeah, I could definitely see that happening. Um that said, we've got time for just one more story. Are we ready? Yeah. Let's do, let's it. do it. All right, let's go. Our final story of the night is about Pikachu. The coronavirus pandemic has resulted in the cancellation of lots of events and gatherings this year, but the 2020 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will not be among them. Basically, Pikachu is returning yet again for the 20th year in a row, and that makes me feel ancient, ancient, ancient. (laughs) Uh, But there is one kind of interesting thing that they mention here. They say a special troop of dancing Pikachu in the parade... Uh, and you have to tune in to find out what kind of uh, new thing they're doing with that. So I'm not like a huge Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade person. I'm usually eating and or sleeping during the parade. Um, okay. But I do okay, like I always try to like look up the gaming related balloons that occur. Mm-hmm. Like I know Sonic is mm-hmm. also a long running attendee of the parade, and that's the yeah, one that right. I kind of get excited for. Yeah, Pikachu's really cool too. But um, and I think you. C- I think they had Goku last year or a couple years ago. They did. Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah. So I, I like seeing the dorky balloons, but I don't watch the whole parade. I'm not going to watch Al Roker tell me, you know, <laughs> the history of every balloon. Um, yeah. But I am kind of interested, like, not because of the idea that there will be a special troop of dancing Pikachu, but almost because it almost certainly is promoting something. And... I wonder if that means that we're going to get some kind of cool, like, holiday variant Pikachu or some some new Pokemon. I feel like there's got to be Maybe something it, they're pushing. It's probably something related to Pokemon Go, if I had to guess. Oh, okay. Maybe. See that. That's, that seems snapped. like the easiest to do. Um, but there's also the fact, like, it's going to be adorable. It's, it's the marching Pikachu I'm thinking of. It's those... Pikachu costumes that you see in Japan all the time that are always yeah. walking in a line. And I got to say, there is part of me that has some major joy thinking of Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade having just that <laughs> line of Pikachu marching under that balloon. Uh, that would be cool. It looks so... Mm-hmm. It, it's always adorable. <laughs> yeah. It's going to look so cool. Yeah. See, I was thinking that it might be a tease for Snap. I was trying to think of well, what are some Pokemon games Ooh. that they've announced or at least shown us a title card for that we haven't heard anything right. since. In That's my true. In, in my thought process was this is mainstream of the mainstream. They're going to keep it as mainstream as possible. They're not going to care about the um, League of Legends like game. The Snap really isn't that big of a deal. Even the mainline Pokemon game, not as big of a deal. Pokemon Go, that's where you get the people to like, "Oh yeah, I remember Pokemon yeah. Go." I, I could yeah. I could see that kind of thing, like though. people mm-hmm. and they are trying to do that Pokemon Go Beyond that we talked about last week on the show. Yep. So right. so there's a good probability. I, I agree with Derek on this one. Like they're going to take whatever they they see as their most mainstream IP, and I would agree that Pokemon Go is probably fits that bill right now. Yeah, it definitely uh, does. I can concede. Yeah. <laughs> I can see. I can see. <laughs> well, well done, sir. Well done. That's that's how Russell you do you it. into submission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's uh that's pretty much what I agree. Pokemon Go, not my favorite thing. I would definitely be way more hyped for news about new Pokemon Snap, but I agree that they're not going to do it at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. It's not the right crowd. It would get right me to tune right in. Yeah. If I knew that, like, if they're yeah. like, "Hey, we're going to yeah. show a new Zelda trailer at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade," I'd be like, "Oh, oh. I guess I'm watching for 13 hours." Don't. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, nobody look at me or talk to me. I'm waiting for a 30 second trailer to show up. <laughs> I, I think they do that like, doing football games with new trailers for movies. So yeah, they do not actually. The yeah. If you're listening, yeah. Nintendo, I'm not going to watch football, but I'll start. If you start showing news, all the trailers during it. (laughs) So with that, I think we've wrapped up today's news stories. So before I flub the outro, (laughs) Asa, where can we find you, man? Oh, yeah. So you can find me at a Green River on Twitter. And then please search Borderline Entertainment on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. Um, Please follow the content because we've got a lot of great stuff coming, um, some cool surprises. And I've got a few more things up my sleeve that I have not mentioned yet. So I'm I'm trying to put I'm trying to dangle the carrot. You need to come follow and you'll you'll see the stuff to come. Secret announcements. Very cool. Trying to pull a Nintendo (laughs) world premiere. One yeah. more thing. 
Oh wow, <laughs> Apple, Apple, and Keeley. I don't, I don't know how that would. Hmm. <laughs> the world can't. Thoughts. The world can't handle it. Handle it. It's too much. Yeah, you got to be one or the other. You can never be both. Yeah. Anyway, with that, like I said, that's all our major headlines for tonight. I want to thank everyone that joined us in our live studio audience tonight, or our live not studio audience, our live virtual <laughs> studio audience. What do we call this thing? Thanks for chat. hanging out with us on today's news tonight in the chat. In the chat. Uh, if you would like to join us in the chat or our live virtual studio audience, I'm just going to start saying Live that. YouTube studio audience. Live YouTube there we studio go. audience. There you you go. Don't, that could work. Yeah. You don't get back-end access to our channel, but you can pretend. <laughs> uh, if you want to join us live for today's news tonight each and every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, you can join us at patreon.com slash gvgaming, where for just five bucks, you can tell me how I'm doing a bad job at this. Like dropping the audio. I did that tonight. Otherwise, you can watch <laughs> us sometime, but usually around 6 a.m. the following day on YouTube. Um, and again, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to our producers. Without your help, we couldn't have these snazzy animated backgrounds or any of this cool stuff that doesn't always work. And a huge thank you to our executive producers. Uh, those of you know who you are, and even though you said you'd be okay if I didn't read it in the chat this morning, I'm still going to read it because I love all of you so much. <laughs> our executive producers are Rob, our man X, Dan and Twistle, Z Patty, who just showed up, hi Z Patty, Adam O'Sullivan, <laughs> Floating Mew, Christopher, The D-Pad, Vesmio, OnStar, Dukemon, Diogo, Kieran Phillips, Benny Yao, my mom, hi mom, Geller, <laughs> Shiny Turkey, Titus Malvolio, Jake Pelka, Michael Phone, Mitchell Herring, Top Dog 23100, Jay Acosta, Game Explain, Charles Zaz, and Andrew Medeiros. I hope I got that right. Uh, remember, you can become a Patreon, or you can become a patron. We did that yesterday. I too. did the same thing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it's easy to mess remember, up. You can become a patron for as little as five dollars a month, as I mentioned before. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Good Vibes Gaming for more good times like these. And until next time, good night and good vibes. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Mega vibes. I didn't make a mega mention. Mega vibes, everybody. Bye. Mega vibes. <laughs>